All right, guys, I want to do a video on punch defense. Which I'm just going to freestyle and go through different ways of defending punches. You can think of things coming in as straight line, jab crosses, outside being hooks, maybe also overhand haymakers that kind of come into play, and at the end, maybe we'll get to uppercuts. Okay, but think of things first as straight punches or even stabs with knives coming at you, straight line attack. So first, we're just going to deal with the jab. One thing you do is you can catch the jab. Good. All I'm doing is open up that rear hand. I don't want to swat at it because the hook over. I just open up because I know where it's going, my CPU, the head. And I'm going to catch it like a catcher's mitt first and then down. Don't try to smack it down. We're going to catch and then a little scoop. But you got to catch first, then scoop. Don't start swatting too much. Okay. So the easiest thing to do is I just open up. The guy jabs a lot about me. I'm going to jab. I can jab. I can catch and counter back. So catch and, and jab back. And then I can get his timing down. Keep going. And I can go at the same time. I can I can catch jab back or I can catch jab at the same time. That's the easiest. Okay. Now we'll be slipping and parrying. Unless you're like a really high level boxer, you probably shouldn't be slipping. I don't like bobbing and weaving under because I worry about kicks, knees, uppercut elbows, and takedowns and all kinds of things. But uh, when you slip to the outside or inside, inside, you should probably be, to the outside, you should be pairing with it. So slipping or pairing, I kind of use them interchangeably because if I'm going to bother to slip, just put your arm up. If I bother to slip, instead of catching out here, it's all distance Maya. I'm going to slip to the outside so I can land a counter jab to his sword plexus, to his chin, to his nuts, something along those lines, or into a takedown. Boom, to get in on the guy. Okay, so if I'm going to bother to slip out here, put your arm up. If I bother to slip, I might as well throw a parry up at the same time to be a little extra safe, in my opinion. Okay, so punch. Jab in my chin. I'm going to slip the outside. Slip down a little bit and just jab my chin. Boom. Boom. I can go on the inside. In here. Don't need more moving too. Just aim them around and go. Okay. So you slip to the outside to counter. Usually I'm going to slip and counter jab. So aim out here. Bring it around here a lot. Okay. I'm going to move here and I'm really going here. And then really I would time the guy catch, catch, catch. And now I'm going to slip and parry. I'm going to go here and then in on him for a takedown or something along those lines if we're talking that type of thing. Okay. Now on a jab cross, I can just go back to the simple one to catch. And cover. I can go catch cover. Aim on that Really cover me. Really cover me. Bang, bang. And I'm ready to counter back because I catch. I, I cover, but I turn it off, roll it off. Monkey cover deep. And then I'm ready to fire my 2 3 2 back or whatever I'm going to do. I'm ready to counter back. Hopefully that makes sense. That's very simple. We can build on that with instead of just catching the jab. I'm going to gunting it. So instead of just catching, I'm going to catch an uppercut elbow at the same time. And without the glove, even with MMA gloves and it sucks, bare knuckle, I might break his fist and stop the guy from wanting to punch it. So if I can catch, I can then also do this because I know where my friggin' my hand knows where my chin is, that's where he's aiming, and I know how to hit my own thing with proprioception. I know how to uppercut elbow my own hand and his fist. Put your hand out. So instead of just this, I'm doing this, maybe catching it early here, maybe underneath. Either way, it sucks. If he came with a uh, jab cross, no throw your two, I'm here anyway. I'm just here, and then I'm ready to count. Okay, so come with a one, two. Come with a one, two, do the count. Shh, shh. come. Shh, shh. Bang. Okay, and I'm ready to count. So it's already there. I can just leave it if I see a shoulder lift, and most guys flare their elbow and telegraph. So that is like really the simple stuff that you guys uh, should get down, okay? Um, we can even go simpler stuff and relate them to each other. If he wants to throw a jab cross at my chin, my chin go, jab cross, I can just double forearm block. I don't like temple guard that's kickboxing with big old gloves because everything slips in barefisted or MMA. But you can do this like Packer West or whatever that Toronto fighter guy is. He was doing it all through his UFC career. And if you have good distance, especially in the outside 
or when you get rocked, you can always have a default going into double forearm block. On an advanced level, it kind of sucks because you're not countering at the same time. So like, it's not the most advanced, but it is simple and effective because they're tied up and you can't really counter it that well off of it. There are some things you could do, but it's very good, easy defense. So if you get rocked, you might want to either do this and back up or crazy monkey cover, cover, cover as you back up or if you're against the cage or the wall or whatever. But back up a little bit. So we're here, if he's got a step to me to hit me because I'm out of range, I can just cover him down, come with a jab cross guard. Okay, do it again. Do it again. And there's my counter, see? So I can use my footwork and control and know the distance, and it really frustrates a guy if he's trying to hit you over and over again, minute by minute, and he's leaping into you, and you have good, faster footwork and better footwork than him, and all I do is this, and he can't fucking touch you with anything. Because if you have good distance, good Maya, you can always come really hard. One more time. Again, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Go. Then you're ready to go with whatever you're gonna do. Well, that's pretty simple. So if I go from double forearm block, we can then go to cross arms defense, okay? Like a little George Foreman action, all right? So instead of that, if he gives me a jab, give me a jab, 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 give me just cross, cross, give me one, two, hard. Well, that's simple. So I could be here, one, two, I take that kind of stuff a couple times, I move around, go ahead. So they come with one, two, and then I'm there. So I'm here, like railroad tracks, and they open up. So I might be on the outside, and I can even put these together, and then skull and bones after that. Those three kind of relate to each other. I like this one when I get his timing down, or I make him overstep. I do attack by drawing, and he really goes for that next second or third one to get me, to try and reach me, and then I decide I'm going to crash into him to close the distance. So actually, let's roll here. So, I might sit, uh, extend your one, two. Boom, boom, stay right there. So we see this distance. So I might do this first, and then he does it the next time, and I'm gonna crash through this, okay? So give me a one, two, I can just stay here. Faster, one, two. One, two, breathe. Okay, and I'll do it again. I'm gonna boom, I'm trying to You see, I can use that to crash into him. Where they're crashing into him is to drive him to the cage, the wall, or the bars in a prison, or uh, I'm trying to hit, or I'm trying to take him down. I really like that to be able to close the distance on him. So give me a hard one, two again. Boom, boom, and I'm in on him, bam, whatever I want to do. I could go here, three, three, two is really good if you're just thinking from a striking perspective, crash in, three, three, two, this top hand, Slowly now give me a one, two, boom, boom. As it's there, look, I'm good, yep, yeah, and I follow this in. I'd be crashing through this, basically like here, right? I'm coming in, I grab his head, I knee him in the balls of the solar plexus, and there's my cotton nagi, okay? Or it could be that three, three, two. Or it could be standing arm triangle. Or it could be bad stuff. Okay, so those relate. Let's say I'm out here, give me a one, two. Bang, bang, give me another one, two, bang, bang. And now retract and then give me a hard overhand right here. Boom. So I'm here, and instead of a two cross coming, he throws an overhand. So this turns into this, so I can go just go on bones. Or like an elbow roll block. But I can just lift it as I see it. So maybe a guy's on a punch blast. And as that angle changes, I thought I was gonna block here. You can always just turn this up and it protects your neck really good. Uh, even if it was a machete, right? This protects my neck pretty good. And I'm in here against this overhand. In a good stance, like that. Just slowly overhand. Boom, so I'm here. Coming down on this chin. So instead of here, see that kind of would hit my guard down. As I see that through the portal, I'm just gonna change the angle in a skull and bones. So see how that works? So you gotta relate all that kind of stuff together. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep filming. I'm gonna do a part two. I'm gonna stop this now, guys. Let me know what you think below. We gotta deal with hooks and uppercuts, um, so I'm gonna keep going.